B and I love meeting and talking to new people on our trips. We've made a lot of great friends along the way, and you never know when someone could give you information that will change your trip. That was definitely the case when a super nice hiker told us about Boynton Canyon. We weren't super familiar with the name of the trail, but as soon as he pulled out his phone and showed us a picture of the famous Sedona rock formation known as the Subway, we knew we had to get out there and check it out for ourselves. This hike is one of the more interesting ones that we've been on. It starts off with a ton of signs telling you exactly where you need to go, but if you're hoping to find the subway, you're going to have to use a lot of wayfinding skills. This one's a bit of a challenge for us because we usually love to give people all the information that they would need to do a particular adventure, but it is really hard to describe how to find the subway. Hopefully you will find some clues in this video that will help you find it for yourself, but unfortunately that's about the best that we can do. What I can tell you though is that you need to be prepared to hike right around 6 miles with 738 feet of elevation gain on super uneven surfaces. Not only is it important that you bring enough water on this hike, but I think it's also super important that you bring some sort of a GPS tracker. There are spots on this trail where you are in super dense forests and it can get really disorienting. We use the Garmin inReach and there's been several occasions where it was really helpful in pointing the direction back to the car. The trail so far has been pretty easy to follow. There are still going to be plenty of signs, and there are a few offshoots, but it's pretty easy to tell which one is the main trail. All that you needed to do up to this point was keep the resort on your left, but at right around this point in the hike, you will be leaving the resort and all of the signs behind and heading out into the forest. We were following tracks that someone had made on the All Trails app, and it was correct when it told us to get off of the main trail. But the coordinates that it had for the subway were not even close. I don't know if there are any other tracks on the All Trails app that are actually correct, but luck was definitely on our side that day when we found it. You will be hiking in a dry riverbed, so I think it's safe to say that it is not a good idea to try this hike if there is rain in the area. I'm not sure if it ever does, but it seems like a great spot for a flash flood if there's a heavy downpour somewhere nearby. We were getting a little bit lost and things were starting to seem just a tiny bit on the hopeless side when V heard some voices off in the distance. We hollered out to the hikers and asked them if they knew how to get to the subway, and they hollered back and said that they were pretty much standing at it. So we honed in to where the voices were coming from and climbed up the hill. Sure enough, we were pretty much there, but we just couldn't see it because the trees were blocking our view. As we rounded the last corner before the subway, we couldn't help but stop and take in our surroundings. I love how Sedona's bright red rocks rise proudly up out of the forest below. It is definitely a postcard-worthy view. The funny thing about the subway is that when you view it from the front, it really doesn't look like much. It looks like a gap between two rock walls. But as you start to get closer, you'll start to see the ledges that make it such a special place. The climb up to the ledges looks pretty intense. Luckily, Sedona Sandstone is really grippy, and if you have shoes with good traction, you should be just fine. And finally, at last, we had reached our destination, the Boynton Canyon subway. This spot is absolutely magical. This is far from one of those touristy spots where people need to go and photoshop the heck out of the picture to make it something special. No work is needed here. It's perfect just the way it is. After enjoying the view that everyone gets to typically see of the Boynton Canyon subway, we headed around the slightly sketchy corner to see what else the area has to offer. As we rounded the corner, we were greeted by some Indian ruins. After doing some research, we found out that some of these are thousands of years old. While it's not illegal to visit the ruins, it is a federal offense to remove anything from them, so don't do that and be respectful. Even though all that's left nowadays is stacked stone, it is still really cool to check out and to try and grasp the fact that this was someone's home that long ago. After checking out the ruins, we decided we were going to head back to the subway for just a couple more shots because somehow we managed to have the place to ourselves, so we might as well take advantage of it. One of the shots that I ended up really liking was this one where V went out on this ledge that was really hard to see from my angle. It just kind of looked like she was levitating. After basking in the magic that is the Boynton Canyon subway for just a little bit longer, we decided that it was probably time to start heading back. We made our way back down the same ramp that we took to get up into the subway. If you're not super sure-footed, it might not be a bad idea to get down and slide on your butt. That sure beats the alternative of going down this ramp like the boulder from Indiana Jones. On the way down the ramp, we noticed a trail that looked a little more defined than the one we took to get to the subway. It seemed like maybe this would be an easier way to get back to the car. I mean, this one had to be the real deal because it even had a stuffed llama hanging from a tree. 
but after wandering around through the manzanita trees for a while, it seemed like it dropped us back down on the same trail. In fact, it seems like a lot of the trails in Boynton Canyon like to split off and then come back together, so hopefully if you end up getting a little bit lost, you'll end up on the main trail eventually. After walking through the rocky river bottoms for so long, it felt really nice on our feet to get back on the sandy washes. On the way back, V somehow managed to spot another ancient ruin tucked away high up on the hillside, so we wanted to go up and check it out. The climb up was super steep and tricky, and I can't imagine being the person thousands of years ago that had to do this every single time they wanted to go home. And if the climb wasn't tricky enough, it's also packed full of cacti. I'm not exactly sure how neither of us got poked on this super skinny side trail. Once we got to the top, we realized that whoever lived here had one heck of a view. I realized that they probably picked the spot with a bit more of a tactical advantage in mind, but they definitely had themselves a premium spot. I'm sure that this would probably be a really pretty spot to stop and watch the sunset, but we still wanted to hit the Bell Rock climb this day, so we had to head back. You could see the main trail from the ruins and it didn't look like it was that far away, but this hill is super slippery and it was gonna put our hiking shoes to the test. The good thing is that once we finally got back down to the main trail, it was pretty much smooth sailing from there on out. There are still some small rolling hills and definitely a bunch of rocks that can trip you up, but nothing too major. I would love to get out there and hike Boynton Canyon again. There are other neat things to see there. There's a vortex and then there's other ruins as well. And that's just the things that we know about. I'm sure that it still has plenty of other hidden secrets up its sleeve. Hikes like this are why Sedona has become one of our all-time favorite travel destinations. What are your favorite hikes here? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy our adventures, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we make new videos. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for all the information about this hike as well as other awesome things to do in Sedona, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.